off your muscles? Alexandra's been lifting <laughs> weights. She has muscles to show up. Can you tell? Yeah. How can you not tell? My name's Alexandria. This is Michael. And today we're making grilled cheese. Welcome to the full measure. Welcome to The Full Measure. If you haven't seen our show before, we like to make a dish in two ways. The first way we make it is very simple and very easy. We try to make it as good as we can without too much effort, and we call that the half measure. The second way we make it, we try to go all out and make it a little more involved and a little more complicated, and we call that the full measure. And then at the end of the episode, we let you know whether going the full measure was worth the time and the effort. I'm excited about today's episode because it was one of the first things that got requested when we started posting videos. Uh, it's grilled cheese. Grilled cheese. Tell me about your favorite uh, grilled cheese memories. All of them. Every single grilled cheese is yeah. special. I mean, right? That's like the comfort food. What do you think about adult grilled cheese or like fancy grilled cheese? I mean, yes. That's it? Sometimes. There's just too much going on, I feel. Some, and you just crave the like simple. Yeah, sometimes you just want like a little American slice of cheese, mm -hmm. a little triangle cut. The half measure version is gonna be the version that everyone's familiar with, with the store-bought bread and just a slice of American cheese or two. And then the full measure version, I'm gonna make bread from scratch. We've got a couple of different types of cheeses to try, and then we've got a couple of things to add to the grilled cheese that break grilled cheese rules a little bit, but it'll be a lot of fun. With that, let's make the easy grilled cheese. Let's make the half measure grilled cheese. I'm sure most of you know how to make grilled cheese, but if there's anyone watching that has never done it, here's everything you need. I really like potato bread for any sandwich, so that's what we have here. The variable that I wanted to test was the traditional use of butter to toast the bread versus mayonnaise. There are a lot of folks that swear that this is the way to go for a grilled cheese, so why not give it a try? You want to spread a very thin layer of the butter on every bit of the bread, all the way to the edges. That really helps you get a nice brown crust on the entire slice. Same thing with the mayo, all the way out to the edges. I like a nonstick pan for any grilled sandwich, so that's what we have here. Place the butter and the mayo side down, and then pop your slices of American cheese on that bad Larry. Two slices is the way to go here, trust me. The real secret to getting bread perfectly toasted is to use low or medium low heat. It takes a little bit longer, but it won't burn and it'll be perfectly golden when you're done. It takes about three to four minutes on the first side, do a little flip, and then another three to four minutes on the second side. That's it. Let's take a look at this cross section, which I'm sure is a little underwhelming, but hey, whatever. You've got yourself a perfect little grilled cheese. I know it's somewhat funny to be giving this amount of time on a cooking channel to making something so simple, but again, maybe there's someone watching who's never cooked anything and this is how they start. This is a great way to learn how to control the heat in a pan and honestly, it's really delicious, even though it's incredibly simple. Let's see how the butter version stacks up against the mayo version. So much. This one's with butter, and this one has the mayo on the outside, like Ooh, people yeah. talking about lately. I don't need to intro these. These are grilled cheese. Everyone knows what they are, so let's just take a bite. They look so good. Which one do you want to start on? Um, the normal. The, the normal butter one? Here you go. That's what's up. <laughs> That's what you think of when you think of grilled cheese, like that, in my head anyway. Uh, this one has the mayo on the outside. Ooh. It's subtle but it's different. It adds just like a little bit of flavor. If someone didn't tell you, I don't know that you would be able to tell that that's not the same as always, but like tasting them side by side, like the mayo. It gives a little bit of something. It's a little something. I can't put my finger on what it is. Maybe it's just a little bit of a like tang from the mayo. It's not necessarily that the mayo tastes like mayo. It just doesn't taste like butter. Mm. This has like that rich buttery, yeah. which is like sometimes almost too much. Yeah, there's a little bit more of like a crisp to it. This yeah, doesn't I think have the, that as much. I think the butter crisp, uh, crisped up a little bit more, which I kind of like. I don't know that I prefer either one, but like it's kind of a fun twist yeah. on, on a grilled cheese. That was good though. Nice soft bread, real yeah. good cheese. That's just yeah. regular American cheese. That's just Kraft Singles. This is not to critique a grilled cheese. Everyone knows what a grilled cheese tastes like. But now that we have it in our head, let's make the full measure grilled cheese. I got some bread to bake. Oh. You have fun, I'm gonna take the rest of this. You take whatever. This. Our full measure grilled cheese is, of course, made with fresh baked bread. These are the ingredients you'll need. If you're like a lot of us during this lockdown, you've been getting into depression or anxiety baking. This is a really good loaf to make if you want any sandwich, and it's from the New York Times. Start by pouring one and a half cups of whole milk into a stand mixer, along with one packet of instant yeast. If you're using active dry yeast, just bloom it before this step. You can see how this is done in our pizza video, as well as a few others. Add one tablespoon of kosher salt, one third of a cup of white sugar, three tablespoons of melted unsalted butter, and two eggs. Give this a mix just to combine everything. Lastly, add five cups of all-purpose flour, but keep the bag of flour handy. 
I'll show you why in just a minute. You'll also need your dough hook for this process. Give this a mix for about 30 seconds, and then we're gonna check the hydration of the dough. You want the dough to be somewhat sticky in texture, but the density to be a little bit firm. If yours is still pretty loose like mine is, add one tablespoon of flour at a time and mix again for 30 seconds. We'll check one more time. Still a little slack, so one more tablespoon of flour and one more mixing session. There, that's perfect. Firm, but still sticky. Now it's time to knead the dough. Do this on medium for about 10 minutes. While I was kneading, you could see this little pin coming loose on my mixer. This is really bad news bears, like not good. Don't let this happen while you're mixing. Actually, let's pause for a second and do a little DIY so we can all learn how to fix this. Step one, unplug it, obviously. If you flip the mixer over, you can see where this pin is supposed to slide through and hold the head onto the stand. If you had a pin that completely fell out, you can slide it back through this way. Thankfully, mine just had to be pushed back in. There's a little flathead screw in there that needs to be tightened down every once in a while. Tighten this with a screwdriver after you get the pin seated and you're good to go. In all seriousness, I will be checking this more often. I learned an important lesson today and thankfully I didn't have to learn it the hard way. This mixer has been working hard on this show lately and your kitchen tools need to be maintained to be safe. I saw this happening and thankfully stopped it before the head of the mixer came completely off the stand. And if you've ever picked up one of these, you know it's heavy as shit. I could have gotten hurt, but I'm glad to have learned a lesson with you today. Now, back to the show. In a separate bowl, give a light coat of some nonstick spray, remove the dough from the mixer, and place the dough in the bowl. Spray the top with a light coat and place some plastic wrap over the bowl. Let this rise for one hour. It should double in size. After the dough rises, turn out onto a lightly floured work surface and knead again for three minutes. Return the dough to the bowl and cover in plastic wrap. The second rise needs about 30 minutes. It may not double all the way again. To shape the loaves, turn it out onto your work surface and punch it down to remove all the air. Then divide this beaten up dough in half. Press the dough into a rectangle about 8 inches wide. Roll the rectangle up onto itself and then seal the bottom with this little weaving technique. It almost looks like you're tying your shoes, kind of? With the seam side still up, pull the ends of the dough together to form the little booty of the bread loaf. This little loaf goes into a loaf pan that has been greased with some non-stick spray. Let's do that again. Flatten it out, roll it up, seal the seam, booty time. This loaf is going into a more traditional aluminum pan. I wanted to see the difference between these and the cheap disposable ones. Give these a quick spray on the top and cover with plastic. Guess what? Time for another rise. This is the last one and it's 45 minutes. When they're done rising, brush with a little melted butter for that extra deep crust and bake them at 400 degrees for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, drop the oven to 350 degrees and bake for another 20 to 30 minutes. They will sound hollow when you tap on them. That's how you know they're done. Or you can take the internal temperature. It should be at about 200 degrees. Lastly, cool these on a wire rack until completely cool. No one said making bread was easy, but these are pretty gorgeous. And these are gonna be great for our grilled cheese. As far as the two different pans go, I actually think the one in the cheap pan turned out way better. Who knows? Speaking of the cheese part of grilled cheese, why not try these on for size? I've got a nice sharp white cheddar, a not so smoky gouda, a parmigiano reggiano, some brie, and finally some cream cheese. Don't judge that last little piggy there until you see what we do with it. Any of these hard cheeses also need to be shredded. Once your loaf of bread is completely cooled, slice only what you need. We're making a few different sandwiches, so I'm just gonna buzz through this whole loaf. At this point, it's pretty similar to the half-measure grilled cheese. Butter every inch of one slice of the bread and put it into a non-stick pan on a medium-low heat. This is where you can get creative. Let's try one with the cheddar and the gouda. Or maybe one with the gouda and the brie. Maybe a little bit of the cream cheese and the cheddar. And then my secret grilled cheese weapon, pickled jalapenos. Oh yeah. Butter the other sides of the bread and flip after about three minutes. Cook for another three minutes on the other side or until it's golden brown. The very astute viewers out there will have noticed that I didn't use the Parmesan. That's because it's going in by itself, like literally by itself right before the bread. Put the Parmesan directly in the pan and then the buttered bread on top of the Parmesan. Top this with a little bit of cheddar or whichever cheese you'd like and cook for about three to four minutes on each side. Feel pretty proud of yourself for bucking the tyrannical system of grilled cheese, but maybe just check, yeah, okay, it's good, we're good. Last thing here is to cut these little fellers into some triangles. Maybe stack them up, I don't know, they're fancy. Yeah, yeah, clean that up too. You should absolutely not make bread from scratch just to eat a grilled cheese. But if you're gonna do it, get ready for all of the glory that is having a fresh loaf of bread in your home. These grilled cheeses are on another level. Is it ridiculous? Absolutely. But that's what this show's about sometimes. So let's give them a try. Let's eat some grilled cheeses. They're all different. Holy crap, that one looks nice. So we have Gouda and Brie, Cheddar and Gouda, Cheddar, Cream Cheese, and Pickled Jalapenos. 
and then an inside out grilled cheese with uh, a Parmesan crisp on the outside and then white cheddar in the middle. All with the fresh baked bread. Let's just, let's do the, the Gouda and cheddar. Okay. Like it's the most and basic. just one bite. Yeah. Cause I'm gonna eat it all later. <laughs> it needs something bright in there cause it's all really like rich and heavy. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good though. Yeah. That bread is so nice. Let's try the brie. I love brie. I do too. A turkey, brie, apple, and apricot jam sandwich is like my favorite sandwich of all time. Ooh. I like the brie in there. I kind of wish it was just brie. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's really, really good. Do you taste a big difference with the fresh bread? Feels very spongy. Yeah, it, there's a lot of life to the bread. Yeah, it's like it's lot. still really soft, but it, like on the outside there's that nice grilled cheese crisp, but yeah. um, the the rest of the bite is like really nice. It's delicate. Yeah. Let's try the let's good. try the Parmesan crisp one. Oh, you're saving it? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I know that's the best one. The Parmesan crisp is nice. It's like not a grilled cheese anymore. I like that texture. It tastes like a cheese it It does taste like a cheese. <laughs> <laughs> it just like hit me. Like cheese it flavor is apparently like baked Parmesan more than you would think. That's a nice texture though. It's so far from a, just a grilled cheese. Like it, I think that that's like its own thing. My favorite grilled cheese of all time, cheddar, cream cheese, cream cheese. pickled jalapeno. I'm gonna probably eat more of this than I care to admit. That's so <laughs> Something that's happening on that, that I, I knew going into it, the rest of these would benefit from, is that there's acid, is something bright, because you're eating a piece of bread with butter that's grilled with cheese that's heavy, like it's all so heavy and like fatty, and that like little bit of bright from the jalapeno and the heat, whew, if you're, if you're gonna put multiple cheeses, which you should, I think, swap any of them in and out, but like the cream cheese in there is like. I love, I mean, I love cream cheese in general, but cream cheese and jalapenos is. Yeah, that's really what solid. What a treat, and then putting it on bread. I'm gonna pause, because I'm gonna eat the rest of this. If you bake fresh bread frequently, absolutely do this. If you just want a grilled cheese, <laughs> no <laughs> way should you make a loaf of bread from scratch to have grilled cheese. That is ridiculous. I mean, that's kind of what the show's about. Let's see where it ranks on our chart of worth itness. This is the chart of worth itness, where we measure how much effort goes into a dish versus how much payoff you get. Grilled cheese is obviously crazy simple to make, but it's such a nice little bit of comfort food for so many folks. This is the epitome of when a half measure beats a full measure. That's because baking bread from scratch to make grilled cheese is way too much work. There's an asterisk on this, however, for the first time ever. After you finish your grilled cheese, you have a whole loaf of fresh bread. So this is a situation in which if you are planning to make fresh bread, definitely make a grilled cheese with it. Nothing is stopping you from having the most delicious grilled cheese ever. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you can check out some of our other videos as well. We are on Instagram and Facebook and Reddit and YouTube, obviously, and Twitter. Um, the internet. We're on the internet. We have a website as well, fullmeasureshow.com, where you can find all of these recipes from the past and today's recipes as well. If you end up making or trying these grilled cheeses, take a picture and tag us in it. We love to see when people make the food that we're cooking on the show. If you have, there's so many options to customize a grilled cheese. Tell us your favorite below, give us a comment. Um, if it's not too much trouble to ask, give us a thumbs up and click subscribe to get any videos that we are putting out. Right now we're doing, I think we're gonna stick to one a week for a little while longer. Thank you again for watching this video and we will see you on the next one, thank you. Thanks, bye.